In my last video, design build a whisk table, I cut some mortises in the legs for the table on this jig. And I had a request of, how did I build it? Well, let's start off with why I built it. There are other mortising jigs on the market that you can purchase. Probably the top end, Lee makes one for $1,200. Oh my gosh. You can buy one at Rockler for $400. Heck, you can buy plans for $9.50 from Philip Morley. I'm going to show you how to, I built mine, so you can build yours too. So let's get started. To start with the easy explanation, your router bit fits in here. I have a three quarters inch bearing on here that fits into this slot. And so this slides along this slot back and forth, depending on whatever length you want to make it. My slot happens to be six and three quarters inches long. So that's the first thing that you need to know about how this functions. You can put any size bit in here up to the internal diameter of your bearing. So let's look at the table. So the table has these two stops on it and they just for the purpose of having slides nothing fancy and Philip Morley's version he had two stops I have one. The back stop comes off it goes through the top in through, in through the base through here and has that slot in there to be able to guide this. This particular piece of plywood is has these grooves cut and I have my runners on the base. So the top here, so let's look at the table top first and you can see that it has a cut through here and this slot is three quarters of the inch which is the size of my bearing. I created that very simply by just cutting a straight line on my plywood and taking two small strips cut them to three quarters of the inch and glued them in to create the slot. So I have two pieces here and then one piece on the outside. That allows my three quarter inch bearing to slide in here nicely. On the back side of this, you have dados cut in here to match the runners on the top of the base. And they can be whatever width you wish to cut that. I use mine with a, a half inch plywood and I think Philip Morley uses a three quarter inch plywood. This is a little lighter, a little easier to, to work with and allows my bits to be able to go through this long enough or low enough to get into the pieces when you cut them. The size of this top is 23 by almost 14. So your base is a piece of plywood that's 12 by 23. I have cut dados in here for my runners to fit into, and then I match the runners on the top of that. I have a slot in here to match the width of my bolt to be able to slide in here. It can be of any length that you want. You just have to make sure that it comes far enough to where when it slides out front, this hole slides over the top of your piece. And in my case, this thing would slide all the way out so it could cut a piece that would be four inches to the center if that's where I wanted to go. You can see this has screws in here, countersunk into the supports to support that. So let's take off our piece here and show you what's underneath. Okay, we're gonna take off our match fit clamps. They're basically holding our workpiece in place. These are clamps to hold it to the workbench. And 
here's what the underside looks like. I'm going to turn it upside down so we can give you a quick explanation. As far as this front panel construction goes, it's just a piece of three quarter inch plywood with these uh, dados cut in here with the dovetail bit that you can get from micro jig. So they provide you in a kit this dovetail bit for the router, a little guide to tell you how high to set it and for the depth of cut, and a pair of these match fit dovetail clamps to slide in these grooves. Real easy to use, real quick to assemble, take apart. You'll love them. You'll find lots of uses for them, as I have. So I'm calling this the table top. This is the underside of it. Very simple construction. It has two vertical pieces followed by a horizontal support that's also nailed into the front clamping board. And so these two wings need to be wide enough where you can clamp this to your workbench. This will sit on the workbench. All of this is out of half inch except for the clamping board, which is out of three quarters. So when I pull this down off the shelf, this is the assembly. This piece goes in here. We use our clamps to clamp it to the workbench on the left and right side. You can put these in or out, it doesn't matter if you get, you get your pieces in here. Our top piece will go in here with our center post, the underside into the top with the washer for that, and we screw that in. That matches our board, allows us to slide back and forth. It only goes back that far because there's no cut. I'm inside the area of cutting here. That's where the first cut can be from there. Then our wings go on the side. These are our width regulators or limiters, whatever term you wish to use. One goes there. And one goes over here. And we're ready to cut. After you have your Morrison jig clamped to your workbench, here's how you determine to set up your boards. So you have a board, let's say you're going to cut a slot or a mortise into the top of this, and you want to put this up here to where it touches the top of the board, and you take your Match fit dovetail clamps, slide that guy in, clamp it down. Take a second one, and you, you can do it from the side or the bottom, depends on how big a piece, how heavy it might be, whether you're concerned it to slip sideways or to slip up or down. Clamp that guy in, tighten it in. Ready to start mortising up here. Here we are at the top of our table. And so we have our slot, and these guides here can move in or out depending on how wide or narrow you wish to cut your mortise. And you can see we have a line right here, and I'll call that the center line. And I have a block here that's exactly three quarters of an inch square that matches this in here. So when you know what your center piece is on your mortise you're going to cut in your, you put this in here to match that center line up to be able to determine that that is the center left and right to know what your travel distance is going to be. So that helps you center it when you have the piece down here and this is done by moving this table in or out. All right, we're going to give you an example here. This is a table leg that you're going to build, and you're going to have a apron. And so on one side, a front, you're going to have the apron coming out this way, and on this side, the apron goes this way. So to not have those two mortises be the same, you want to cut the mortise on this side of over here, and then over here, you want to cut it off center on that side. So your apron will come out here, have a smaller reveal there and there. 
So this is about two inches. So we're gonna set up this up to where we can make that cut. So let's show you now. Here's the sample mortise I'm gonna cut. So I have this a half inch in, gonna be a half inch cut, two inches long, and that's the center mark. This one here is gonna be centered, so I've only marked the center mark of that, where that's gonna be, with that being the two stops and bottom. So now let me show you how we place it in our jig. Now we take our table leg that we're going to cut in here, and it doesn't matter which one we cut first, we'll just do this one first. So we're gonna put this underneath here. Now the most important part about getting your piece of wood clamped down is make sure it's flush underneath the top of your mortise jig to make sure your cut will be the exact depth that you want it to be. Now we look down on our piece into our slot so we can see right here. So this crosshair there is what we're trying to mark. And so I want the intersection of this orange line and that black line. So I'll put my guide in here when this line matches that line I know that I have it centered so with that I can lock it down back here so it doesn't slide back and forth that way take out our guide now we have this set here because we measured that and I know we have that centered on our slot that we want to cut now we have to determine the length of travel that we're going to need for our router to go here. So I measure that uh, the max depth I want to cut is one and a quarter inch deep and my top of my table is a half inch. So that's going to leave a three quarter inch depth cut into my wood. To help me better explain the travel portion of this, I'm using blue tape to show the edges, the inside edges of where my router bit is to travel. So when I set my router bit down on one end, that's a half inch because that's the width of the blade. The total inch that we go to the edge is going to be from here to there is going to be an inch and a half because we're cutting two inches. So I only need to travel from there to there. In reality, this guy's going to go away like this. We may be able to better see that from there. So the edge of the router bit right here is with the edge of that tape that's right there and on the other side, it's approximate. Once you do this a couple times, you'll get the hang of it. So now I have that, I move the stop block up over here to the left side and tighten that down. So it can't, that's our start point. And over here, we want to travel to this router bit touches the edge over here on the right side. And so when this bit comes, this portion of the bit right here gets even to that part of the tape, that's the stop point. With the stop point determined over here, we slide in this right stop to there and we tighten down the stop. Now let's cut a mortise. An additional way to measure your spacing between your two blocks is the width of the router plus the distance of travel. Since mine is six inches, it'd be seven and a half inches. You can either measure your blocks and space them apart or cut a piece of plywood that distance and use it. Okay, now we got our mortise. It's cut. Here's our edge line there. And there's the edge line right there. Perfect half inch deep, or rather half inch wide, three quarters inch deep, two inches long. Now let's cut the one on the other side. So to complete the second mortise, so the other side, and just reclamp it back into the work piece and do the same thing we did before with a couple quick passes, voila. And there you have it, one, two inch mortise 
offset half inch from the front, one two inch mortise centered on the side. So there you go, a mortise and jig. So if you liked our explanation on the construction and build of this mortise jig, and you like our projects, hey, consider giving us a thumbs up. I want to see some of our build projects where we actually put mortises and legs for tables we build. Consider subscribing down below. And as usual, come back and see me real soon.